Hi guys, my name is Azan. Welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be a March wrap-up video because number one, I'm bored and number two, I'm quarantined at home. So what else can I do? Well, there's a lot of other things that I can do, but whatever. That's not the point. So um, in March, I actually read seven books, but I'm going to include one book I read in February because that's the only book I read in February and I thought, eh, why not? So the book that I read in February is called The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arakawa and I gave this book a 5 out of 5 rating and basically the premise of the plot or the book is about this guy called Satoru who found a stray cat near his house or like apartment building if I'm not mistaken and he decided to adopt that cat and he named that cat Nana but due to unforeseen circumstances he cannot keep that cat anymore and decides to bring that cat on a road trip to meet his friends and family just to see whether they can take the cat in and the reason why I gave this book a 5 out of 5 rating is because you can number one you can really relate to the characters number two it's really heartwarming number three it's bittersweet Number four, and the most important reason, is because it made me ugly cry. I mean, like, if a book can make you ugly cry, doesn't it deserve a good reading? So, yeah, that's the book I read in February. And the books that I read in March are a few books that range from, like, five stars to, uh, you. I can't believe I read it. So the first, <clears throat> sorry, so the first book that I read that I gave a really good rating for is um, The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang which is a graphic novel and basically the premise is in the title it's a prince and his dressmaker dressmaker because the prince I forgot his name actually um, he really likes to dress up as a you know as using dresses I'm not doing a good job of this because I can't really remember the details not that it's not good, the book is good, I'm just a really forgetful person. But yeah, I really like, I don't know, the plot of this book because it's just really simple, you know. It's just a, this kid who happens to be a prince and who also happens to just really like using dresses. Is he queer? Is he gay? Nobody knows. And I like the lack of labels in the book because I feel like it's not really fair to label somebody too early when they're still just like searching for their own identity and stuff like that. And um, I really like how it was drawn, it was really nice, the story was straightforward, straight to the point, and it emphasized on all the important things, which is you just gotta love somebody for who they are and accept them for who they are. And yeah, there's nothing much I can say about this book except I really, really like and enjoy it. So the next book I gave um, a 5 out of 5 rating is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. And come on, who doesn't know Coraline? by Neil Gaiman and obviously this book I give it a 5 out of 5 because number one the movie is my favorite like on um, animation I think yeah I think it's called animation it should be animation right or is it stop motion animation whatever it's my favorite movie from stop motion animation I thought the movie is super cool it's scary and stuff like that and the book is also the same I'm just like shocked because I thought YB existed in this book but he didn't so which made the book like 10 times more creepier because Coraline had to do it all on her own so yeah five out of five no-brainer the next one is a book that I saw was pretty hyped up in the book community I think in like booktube or whatever and it is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I really like this book oh my god I keep saying I really like it but I'm not explaining really well why I like it so um, this book is basically um, like a biography of this starlet called Evelyn Hugo and she is, I feel like she is a mix of Elizabeth Taylor and Marilyn, I was about to say Marilyn Manson, but that's not correct, it's Marilyn Monroe. So yeah, I feel like she's a blend of these two actresses and it's like a blend of their lives and basically it's just an auto autobiography or biography, a biography of her life of her seven husbands and eventually her coming out saying that she's actually bisexual and she has a wife so that was shocking to me because i did not expect that it's not really a plot twist i just didn't expect there, there to be lgbtq plus issues in this book you know so i was like oh that's really nice and i really 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 like evelyn hugo the character i feel like when i read it i was completely swept away 
by her characterization. She's just, I was blindsided by her. So yeah. Plus the plot was really good. I saw some like contention on like uh, Goodreads. Some of them didn't really like the book because they didn't like Evelyn. They they thought she was arrogant stuff like that. But because I really like Evelyn and I I I just think she's cool. So I really like the book because of Evelyn. Does that make sense? Never mind. So hmm, what else? Yeah, that is pretty much it for like my five readings. There's two books that I gave like a three out of five rating. One is Glup by Arif Adli from the publication Fixie. And the other one is What Happens in London by Julia Quinn. So Glup by Arif Adli. I really enjoyed the book. But the reason why I only gave it a three out of five is because number one, it was kind of predictable. It's basically a group of friends who go on a holiday in this remote bungalow in the middle of the, in the middle of the ocean la pula. I was just yeah you know, it's in the middle of the forest basically and then obviously it's like it's like a cliche but it's a trope so obviously you have a group of friends in the middle of like a remote bungalow in the forest somebody's gonna get killed obviously and there's only like two ways like there's only two reasons people get killed in a bungalow in the forest number one it's always like revenge number two they're just psychopaths so obviously half not even halfway like i think 10 percent into reading it you can obviously see it's uh, basically they're going with the revenge plot and the reason why i gave it a three out of five aside from it being like really predictable and cliche and tropey is because towards the end the plot just doesn't it's not believable it's not realistic towards the end it just beca became like this saw type of thing you know saw the movie like people are getting tortured left and right and then there's like torture devices it's like that's not my problem my problem is how it's enacted how it was done <clears throat> by the antagonist it doesn't make sense like this antagonist is doing it by themselves right oh i kind of I kind of like oh put a spoiler whatever so it's like they're doing it by themselves i feel like the author should have like explained how they did it you know how they brought like all the equipment there how they killed all these people and tortured them but they don't like the author doesn't do that so in the end you're just like wait what the fuck how did how did this person do this so it's like you're telling me that this person managed to do all of these things alone without raising suspicions or anything. Like, it's just not realistic or believable. And also towards the end, like, a few characters went out of character. Or like, they're not how they're written in the first half of the book. So you're like, right. So basically, I just have problems with the pacing. I have problems with the characters where they just are not the same characters from the first half and the second half and yeah that's it so the second book which is what happens in london by julia quinn it's um about this it's about olivia bevelstoke who starts spying on her neighbor harry valentine because she heard rumors that he killed his fiance basically that is the premise i Usually, I really like Julia Quinn's historical romance book <clears throat> books because she's really funny. Like, you know how she writes? It's really funny. Oh, does that sound bad? It's, it's just like, I don't know, she puts comedic attributes to it, you know? And it's funny. And it's really fun to read. And it's a breeze to read. But this book was just boring. And then, and the reason why I find it boring is because I find Olivia Bevelstoke boring. Like, cardboard has more personality than her. She doesn't read, she doesn't write, she doesn't do anything. You know she's smart, but she doesn't do anything with her intelligence, you know? It's just kind of like, oh, she just likes to read the newspaper. Okay, and then what else do you do with the damn newspaper? Do you write to Congress or something? Does Congress exist in Regency? I don't know, but you know, Parliament. Like something. But no, she doesn't do anything. She just goes to parties and then complains about it. And then she meets this guy, and then like, she's, she's, I hate her. She's boring, okay? She's really boring. And mind you, the only reason that Harry actually just like, doesn't mind her stalking him is because she's pretty. 
that's it. I'm pretty sure if she looked like a troll, he would have called the cops or something. So, yeah. And there's two books that I read that I did not like. The first one I initially liked, but then after some retrospection, I'm like, okay, my video just got cut off. But basically, what I said just now, there's two books that I didn't like. The first one is Erotic Stories by Pro Punjabi Widows by Bali Karchazwal. And it's basically an East meets West type of story where Nikki is uh, the daughter of these Indian ing immigrants who's living in London and she's all modern and you know the, the stereotypes and then she like goes to South Hall to teach um, English creative writing classes and there she what you call taps back into her roots and you know the usual stereotypes and I feel really tired about talking this because it's very tropey and it's very stereotypical and it doesn't bring anything new and the reason why i don't like this book is because i feel like this book doesn't know what the fuck it wants to be it wants to be contemporary fiction chick lit um what else mystery murder mystery and then it tries to be it's tries it tries to be like east meets west it tries to deal with a lot of like feminist issues or women issues but it does the thing is it doesn't do any of these perfectly it doesn't do any of them justice it just makes it a really weak book because you're trying to hit all these points in these different genres but you don't hit any of them well is what i'm saying so you're trying to be everything but then at the end you're just, you're practically nothing because you're not good at anything at all well that sounds harsh but it's the truth although i must give it like credit where it's due because i did read this book like quite easily it was an it was an easy book to read you just breeze through i finished the audiobook in like a day a day and a half i think and i didn't skip i just put it like really really fast i think my speed was like either 1.8 or 2 so the next god damn my phone keeps like crashing probably because it doesn't have enough space but yeah the next book that i did not like and borderline hate is called my friend anna uh, the True Story of a Fake Heiress by Rachel De La Roche, I think that's her name. And it's basically a memoir of Rachel being scammed by Anna when they went to um, Morocco for a holiday. And it talks about their friendship, how they met, how they became friends, etc, etc. And at last, how Anna got caught by the authorities. So, yeah. I hate this book because I cannot stand the narrator. I read the audio audiobook by the way. I cannot stand the narrator. I kind of hate the author, which is kind of mean because I've never met her and she's actually, you know, a person that exists. So, yeah. I don't know. It's like when you read or listen to the book, you just <clears throat> cannot stand the narration because the author keeps saying or compares herself to Anna saying that, oh, I'm so humble. Like, I'm a humble person. I'm an introvert. Like, I'm such a patient person. I'm not a person that name drops. I'm not a person that comes from privilege. I'm very humble. I'm very patient. I'm kind. I'm sweet. It's like she's constantly like saying good shit about herself. But saying bad shit about Anna in comparison. And it's like the first few chapters, it's fine for you to say that. You know, to give context of like where you are as compared to this other person. But mind you, after seven hours of listening to that shit, it really grates on your nerves. It just drives me crazy. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, I fucking get it. Your mother freaking Teresa. I get it, okay? Like... But it just makes you wonder, you know, if you're such a humble person and you're not a person that comes from privilege and you're a person that doesn't name drop shit, why are you friends with Anna in the first place? Because you're friends for like a year plus, I think. There must be something that you guys have, something in common for you guys to be friends, you know? So obviously, if it's not because of, uh, what do you call it? of how you guys are raised there must be something and she keeps saying like oh i don't name drop but in the book all she does is name drop like where they eat the five star restaurant they eat the places they visit the spa they go to the what do you call it the trainer they train with everything is name dropping oh this trainer works with kim kardashian oh, I'm, I'm just making it up i cannot remember but i think it's kim kardashian or she's just saying like or oh, they ate at Le Cuckoo or something, which is a five-star restaurant. She names drops the hotels and like, I'm just kind of like, you say you don't name drop, but that's all you do throughout the whole book, which is kind of annoying. Another thing is the book reeks of fucking privilege. And I feel like 
it just makes the author looks really self-centered and really not self-aware. It's like, okay, she says the reason why she gave the card is because she believes, she trusts, and she's confident that Anna will pay her back. And I'm like, okay, fine, you know, that's, that's what friends do. They help each other out. And you might be confident that Anna will pay you back. But the least you can do is ask, how much was the cost of the damn Moroccan trip? She didn't do that once. And then she's completely shocked when her credit card was like charged 70k. Oh, don't mind my mom. She's cleaning the toilet, by the way. Um, so yeah, she was charged 70k. So I'm like, why are you shocked? It just seems like you're stupid. That's all. I, I know I'm being harsh, but as a person who actually has to work really hard for their money, I'm just confused. Like if it's just 200 or like a few hundred, maybe 5,000 at most, maybe I can like just turn like just pretend it doesn't exist like oh it's, it's fine it's fine you know who you do that for a friend but it's like 70k are you insane like you didn't ask or anything and then it took her like two months to go to the authorities and then it's shocked that the authorities couldn't do anything like like dude the first month you should have just gone to the cops get a lawyer or something so yeah i didn't like this book because the more i listened to it the more i read it the more i felt like my brain brain I can't even speak because I feel like my brain cells were dying just listening to this book. I definitely do not recommend. It's just a waste of space, a waste of time. And I'm I'm thinking like, oh, it's now turning into like a movie or something, which is like, ew. So, but another book that around the same type of things, like, you know, um, fraud and stuff is I would definitely recommend. I'm like halfway through is Bad Blood by Jim john carry so yeah i think that bad bad blood is a good book it's about that theranos thing so yeah that is my march wrap up sorry it took so long i just needed to rent some place i can't even speak so i better just stop the video now bye